Welcome to today's lecture on sphincter of OD dysfunction, SOD. We will cover its anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, classification, clinical presentation, diagnostic modalities, differential diagnosis, treatment options, complications, outcomes, emerging therapies, and multidisciplinary approach. Let's explore SOD together for a comprehensive understanding. The sphincter of OD is a muscular valve that controls the flow of bile and pancreatic juice into the small intestine. It has three layers, muscular, mucosal, and connective tissue, which work together to regulate the release of these digestive fluids for optimal digestion. The development of sphincter of OD dysfunction is multifactorial and can be attributed to inflammation, scarring, and muscle dysfunction in the sphincter. Inflammation of the sphincter and its surrounding tissues can result from various etiologies, including gallstones, infections, autoimmune disorders, and previous surgical interventions. This inflammation can lead to fibrosis and scarring, causing narrowing or obstruction of the sphincter and impairing its normal functioning. Muscle dysfunction can occur due to abnormalities in the coordination and strength of the sphincter's contractions, affecting its ability to regulate the flow of bile and pancreatic juice adequately. These pathophysiological processes result in altered pressure dynamics within the sphincter, leading to symptoms and complications associated with SOD. Sphincter of OD dysfunction, SOD, is classified into subtypes based on affected components and symptoms. Biliary type affects bile flow, pancreatic type affects pancreatic juice flow, and mixed type involves both. Functional SOD has abnormal function without structural abnormalities, while structural SOD has structural changes. Accurate classification is essential for proper diagnosis and management. SOD presents with a wide array of clinical symptoms, which often overlap with other gastrointestinal disorders, making it a challenging condition to diagnose. The hallmark symptom of SOD is recurrent or episodic abdominal pain, typically located in the epigastric or right upper quadrant region. The pain is often described as sharp or colicky and can radiate to the back or shoulder. Additionally, patients may experience nausea, vomiting, bloating, and dyspeptic symptoms. The pain patterns, duration, and associated symptoms can vary between different subtypes and individuals. Recognizing the characteristic patterns of pain and analyzing the clinical presentation are crucial steps in diagnosing SOD and distinguishing it from other conditions with similar symptoms. To diagnose SOD, doctors use tests like imaging studies, such as ERCP and MRCP, laboratory tests, and procedures like manometry. These help visualize the ducts, assess function, and rule out other causes of symptoms. Given the overlapping symptoms and nonspecific nature of SOD, it is crucial to consider other conditions in the differential diagnosis. Biliary colic, characterized by temporary obstruction of the bile ducts by gallstones, can mimic SOD symptoms. Pancreatitis, whether acute or chronic, can also present with abdominal pain and elevated pancreatic enzyme levels, requiring careful differentiation. Functional gastrointestinal disorders, such as irritable bowel syndrome and functional dyspepsia, may exhibit similar symptoms but lack specific anatomical abnormalities. Imaging studies, laboratory tests, and a thorough clinical evaluation can aid in ruling out these alternative diagnoses and reaching a definitive diagnosis of SOD. Management of SOD involves tailored multidisciplinary approaches including conservative measures, medical therapy, endoscopic interventions, sphincterotomy, or surgical approaches. Treatment choice depends on factors like patient health, severity of symptoms, and response to previous interventions. A team effort is crucial for optimal management. SOD can lead to various complications, necessitating timely diagnosis and appropriate management. Recurrent episodes of biliary or pancreatic obstruction can predispose individuals to recurrent pancreatitis and cholangitis, leading to long-term morbidity. Chronic inflammation and scarring within the sphincter can result in the formation of strictures or stenosis, impeding bile and pancreatic juice flow and potentially requiring additional interventions. The overall outcomes of SOD management depend on several factors, including the subtype and severity of SOD, adherence to treatment regimens, response to interventions, and presence of any underlying comorbidities. Regular monitoring and surveillance are essential to detect potential complications, assess treatment efficacy, and offer appropriate interventions to minimize long-term adverse outcomes. Endoscopic sphincterotomy is an effective intervention for managing SOD by improving bile and pancreatic juice flow. It is performed during ERCP, guided by fluoroscopy, with either partial or complete incision. Careful patient selection and weighing risks and benefits are crucial for optimal outcomes. Long-term monitoring and surveillance are essential for managing sphincter of OD dysfunction, SOD. Regular evaluation helps detect symptom recurrence, complications, and treatment effectiveness. This involves imaging studies, lab tests, and clinical assessments to evaluate the sphincter's function and any structural changes. 
Patient education and compliance are crucial for effective management. Early identification and management of symptoms and complications are key for optimal outcomes. Advancements in SOD understandings with new treatments, including medication and endoscopic procedures. Ongoing research explores underlying mechanisms and potential therapeutic targets for targeted therapies. These advancements have the potential to improve patient outcomes. The management of sphincter of OD dysfunction, SOD, requires collaboration among gastroenterologists, hepatologists, surgeons, and pain specialists. Close communication and coordination between these specialties are crucial for providing comprehensive care to patients with this complex condition. In summary, understanding sphincter of OD dysfunction requires knowledge of its anatomy, pathology, and clinical presentation. Accurate diagnosis, appropriate treatment, and long-term surveillance are crucial. Advancements in the field and a multidisciplinary approach offer improved outcomes for patients.